So a few months ago, I did a trailer reaction video to Minari. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be reacting to the new Minari trailer. Minari is the newest A24 film, and I managed to get my hands on some virtual screening tickets. So here's my review for the newest A24 film, Minari. In this movie, Steven Young plays Jacob, whose wife is Monica, played by Han Yeri. Their kids, David and Annie, are played by Alan S. Kim and Noelle Cho, respectively. The basic premise of this movie is that a Korean-American family moves to Arkansas and they have to start a new life. The wife and husband are always arguing. When they move there, the kids are pretty bored and they have to call their grandma to come. Their grandma comes so that their life feels a little bit more normal because they basically moved into a farm in the middle of nowhere. The movie specifically highlights the struggles of having to keep a family together, especially when you first move somewhere and you don't really have that many utilities. In this movie, for example, for example, the main utility that was lacking for the family was money. One reason this happened in the movie was because the dad was using all of their water on crops, so eventually the water stopped running in their house. This led to many back and forth arguments between the mom and the dad, and this kind of made the kids feel separated and the kids had a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of subplots in this movie that I don't necessarily want to go into because they are spoilers. And I know that a lot of you guys won't be able to get your hands on this movie for a while, so this review is just here so you know if you want to go watch it or not. So the first thing I want to talk about in this movie is the acting. I feel like Steven Yun's acting, as as well as Han Yuri's acting was super awesome and they honestly blew my minds. And I'm super glad I watched these movies because at first glance, it doesn't seem like it's gonna be anything crazy. At first glance, this movie looks super basic and like a super basic coming of age story of like a family coming to a new city and them having to adapt. But this movie does a lot of stuff differently. Another really big strong suit of the movie is kind of the backstory of the family. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but the family moved from California to Arkansas. Now they're living a pretty decent life and a lot of people would call it the American dream, but the dad is just determined to keep doing better and to show his kids that he won't fail. Now when all of us say the American dream, we're always thinking living lavishly, but I feel like in this movie and especially back in that time, like the 1980s, I feel like the biggest thing is not just living lavishly, but being uh, having enough to sustain yourself. And that was especially vital for immigrants that just moved to the country and moved to a new city in a new country. What happens in this movie is on top of living the American dream, there are smaller issues that are coming into this family. Like I said before, I'm not gonna go specifically into these things, but one of these things is that the little boy has a heart issue. They've been teasing it the entire movie. They keep saying, oh, don't run, don't run. You know, he shouldn't be doing all this work because the mom is worried about him. And that's one of those underlying issues that I love so much about the movie. Just when you think everything's going right in the movie, you seem to realize that, oh my God, there's these underlying issues that could change the movie's pace instantly. And that's not necessarily a bad thing but it, because it always keeps you on your toes and it always keeps you waiting for something. And honestly, having that anxiety during the movie isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's not like a make or break anxiety. It's like an excitement anxiety because you're excited and you're kind of waiting to see what the director is gonna do next. If you haven't already seen my trailer reaction or you haven't seen the trailer at all, I really recommend not watching it because there was one part of the trailer that I was just waiting for and waiting for and waiting for in the movie and it came near the ending and I really was like worried that it wasn't in the movie or it was kind of just like a teaser thing that they did in the trailer to make people come watch the movie, but it happened in the movie. It just didn't happen when I expected it to. So again, if you haven't watched the trailer, don't watch the trailer. Don't waste your time doing it. Just go straight into the movie without it. So as I said before, there's a lot of underlying issues going through the story, just as everything seems like it's getting positive you remember the underlying stories and the underlying like suffocating parts i guess you could call it something that you just completely forgot about right well in this movie that also does it with relationships and that's also another thing i like about it it does it and it does it in all aspects of the movie not just in terms of basic subplots. They do it with both um, emotions and relationships. One example of a relationship that fluctuates a lot in this movie is not only the parents, but also the grandma and the son. When I say son, I'm talking about David, not the dad. Another thing that I really love about the story is how much risk there is for each of these characters. Now, obviously there's not gonna be risk for the kids or the grandma, but I'm necessarily talking about the parents. Jacob, played by Steven Yun, is basically risking his entire marriage for this farm. There are countless arguments in this movie and obviously okay they're not like the high top tier act i mean okay they're top tier but they're not like marriage story arguments level going back to what i was saying about the risking at all like i said before jacob is ready to basically risk everything for his marriage and i feel like that's not necessarily a good thing but it's not necessarily a bad thing because you can see his devotion his passion to making sure that his kids know that he wants to succeed and that he wants them to see that he can succeed in life 
in the same realm of emotions is a third act. Now, the third act was super awesome and, and pretty crazy to me. There's a lot that happens for a third act. Usually a third act is kind of like setting up. It's like usually like, okay, for example, a superhero movie for a third act, it's usually like a tiny battle that kind of prepares the hero or kind of prepares the villain for what's to come in the final act. But in this movie, it was more emotionally driven, obviously, because it's not a superhero action film. But it was a very, it's a very emotionally driven, and that kind of pushes us towards the final act. Now, there's a lot of emotional stories that come out, and a lot of stuff that goes down, especially in that third act, that pushes us and makes us like eager to see the final act. And that's one thing that I really loved about the movie. Now, I can't specifically say anything that happened in the third act because that would spoil a lot for the movie. But just know the third act of this movie is superb. Now, the only issue and the only thing that people can actually gripe about in this movie is the pacing. The pacing is super slow and it's slow throughout. Now, I'm usually not a fan of slow movies, but I'm glad I got through it in the beginning because towards the middle and then going into the end, you can tell why it's slow. It's because they want to emotionally drag you out, if that makes any sense. I feel like they really want their audience to be able to connect with all these characters. And in doing that, they have to kind of make the movie go slow. Because if they go too fast, you're not really being to, able to empathize with each, with each character. And I feel like that's a super important part, especially going into the final act of the movie. Again, the pacing really worked for me because I actually thought the buildup was worth it. And I felt like it was super raw and that's kind of what the movie needed because the movie itself was pretty raw but there were a few scenes that could have gone without and not necessarily saying the scenes were bad they just weren't necessary to the ending if I was to kind of dig deep into the movie and kind of point out every little issue, they would all come back to pacing. The movie was super slow and I usually don't like slow movies, but for me, the ending was worth it and I felt like it was slow for a reason and that reason was so that you had empathy for all of the characters. The reason I love this movie so much is just because of how passionate it is and like the storyline is so captivating and really brings you in. Now, I know a lot of movies this year really haven't like brought me in as much as this one and it just felt like I was kind of immersed in this one where I felt for every single character. There wasn't a single character in this movie that I didn't care about. Even side characters that were involved, I was excited to have them introduced because I was excited to see what impact they would have on each of the individual characters. Like I said before, this is one of the most emotionally captivating and immersive movies I've seen in a very long time. And for that, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. Let me know in the comments down below which A24 film is your favorite. If you guys want more reviews on independent films like this one, let me know by dropping a like rating down below. All right guys, that's it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to drop a like rating down below. Share with your friends if you enjoyed. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace.